In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There are four days in the Episcopal Church calendar considered particularly appropriate for baptism. Today is not one of them. <laughs> However, if we were to choose a fifth day, beyond the Feast of the Baptism of Our Lord, beyond the Easter Vigil and Pentecost and All Saints, today would surely be a top contender. The readings appointed for this fifth Sunday of Easter feature the two foundational characteristics of Christian identity, baptism and belonging. Baptism, of course, is the ancient rite of initiation into the Christian faith. The practice is linked to an even older Jewish rituals of purification required for full participation in religious life and community. Belonging is how we recognize that community. Belonging is connectivity, bonds that bend but don't break. True belonging is communion, a trusted closeness and intimacy of relationship. It's the word we use interchangeably with our sacrament of Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion. Baptism and communion are the two primary sacraments in the Episcopal Church. The other sacramental rites are available but not essential. Holy matrimony, ordination, confirmation, to name a few. But we find our essential identity in Holy Baptism and Holy Eucharist. Holy Baptism happens once. In it, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. In the words of our prayer book, holy baptism is the sacrament by which God adopts us as God's children and makes us members of Christ's body, the church, and inheritors of the kingdom of God. Holy Eucharist is recurring. It's a pattern of life, the sacrament commanded by Jesus for the continual remembrance of his life, death, and resurrection until his coming again. In it, we receive forgiveness of our sins, the strengthening of our union with Christ and one another, and the foretaste of that heavenly banquet, which is our nourishment in eternal life. Together, these two sacraments define who we are. And today, on the occasion of young master Teddy Swain's adoption into the church, we hear two stories about these two sacraments. The first is a story about baptism. Philip, an evangelist and preacher, is directed by an angel of God to meet up with an unusual future convert, an Ethiopian eunuch. The second is about communion. We hear in the words of Jesus himself what is required of us believers and followers to truly belong. So I want to say just a few words about each. We'll begin with baptism. In the book of Acts, radical changes were underway. The church in Jerusalem was being persecuted, the disciples scattered, witnesses to the gospel being stoned to death, and for some reason, God sends Philip to a wilderness road in the heat of the noonday sun, which is hardly a prime time or place to make new disciples. Yet it is here that Philip encounters a strange and fabulous character. He is a rich African royal official in a chariot with a Bible in hand, Jewish curious, who is also a eunuch, which means he is stigmatized in religious society. What is he doing? He is reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. So Philip asks the Ethiopian eunuch if he understands the words of scripture he's reading. How can I, says the eunuch, unless someone guides me? Philip, an insider, 
then climbs into the chariot and sits beside this thrice marginalized man and proclaims to him the good news of Jesus Christ. Gazing out from the chariot, this foreigner, this non-Jew, a black man, a sexual anomaly, sees some water and he asks, what is to prevent me from being baptized? Notice how this question is phrased, not may I or I'd like to, but what or who is blocking me from God? Down they go into the water and the Ethiopian eunuch is welcomed across the border into faith through baptism. So now let's consider communion. Our gospel lesson today from John is another of Jesus' I am statements. Last Sunday it was, I am the good shepherd. Today it is, I am the true vine. So here we move from wide welcome of an individual to this living, intertwined, communal connection to Jesus, the purpose of which is to bear fruit. Jesus is the vine. We all are the branches of that vine. If we stay connected, if we abide and make our home in this jumble of vine and branches, we will do great works of love together, bearing sweet and nourishing fruit for a lost and hungry world. Now, we live in an anxious and disruptive time, and it's easy to forget just what that healthy and wholesome connection to Jesus looks like in practical terms. It's honestly, it's practically, it's probably always been that way, which is why it is important for us branches to reaffirm our own baptismal promises on a regular basis. It is why this community of faith and our rhythmic return to the table matter in the grand scheme of things. Now, of all the metaphors Jesus uses to describe himself in John's gospel, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, I am the gate, I am the way, the truth, and the life, only today's I am statement is followed up with the words, and you are. I am the vine, he says, and you are the branches. It is a living metaphor made real today before our eyes. Teddy Swain is Christianity's newest, greenest little branch. He is connected to Jesus, the true vine, in this communion of faith alongside generations of his family tree, sister, uncle, mother, grandmother, count cousins, all of this family baptized here at Christ Church. And as moving and sweet as this day is, what matters to God is what lies ahead. As Teddy grows up from a baby to a little boy to a teenager to a man, his identity will be shaped in community and in connection to the true vine. And we, the branches nearest to him, promise not only to nurture his life in faith, but also to serve as an example of loving kindness and fruitfulness and generosity in a world that will try hard to distract and discourage him. So today, as we pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to descend upon this child at his baptism, may we remember who we are and in whom we abide. It is a bit of a messy tangle at times, this communion, this church of ours, yet it is a glorious, living, growing thing rooted in the soil of abundant love, fed by the life force of Jesus, the true vine, and refreshed on this day by the waters of baptism. God is here, abiding in us, and we are here, abiding in God. Together we are one one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of all. 
So wherever you are, welcome, Teddy. Welcome to your baptism. Welcome to where you belong. <laughs>